hey, you guys, put a finger down if you've ever bought a lens that was like $100 brand new. So lately, I've been in a bit of a slump, and as an artist, this happens every so often, I've just been feeling uninspired. So with that, I thought about all the things I could buy. <laughs> I thought about the things that I'm doing, I thought about my gear, and I ended up down a little bit of a rabbit hole. All of the gear that I currently use is very functional, and I've worked really hard to eliminate the quality leaks so I could create the most pristine images free of grain and all the other stuff that's disgusting, which is fantastic for my work, but on the other side, I wonder if I'm sacrificing a piece of the art and with it, the reason that I started photography in the first place, having fun. It's about the friends you make along the way. I was scrolling around Amazon and uh, I stumbled across this other little guy here. And I thought that you know, uh, life is sometimes really hard and you wake up and then you realize that you got to keep existing and then you have to wake up and then you do it every day. And then some people sit at a desk that they don't want to be at and then they do that forever. And then some people's favorite sport is golf and some people pick to make their so I bought this lens. Introducing the Niwa 35mm f1.1 APS-C E-mount manual focus prime lens. Clocking in at a modest 7.9 ounces, this lens certainly won't break your wrist and at only 159 Canadian dollars or 100 on a cheeky Black Friday sale, it won't break your bank either. Um, I thought it looked cool. I thought it could be a fun little piece of gear to try and, you know, worst case, woo, and, uh, you know, worst case, uh, it was, it was a hundred bucks, so not too much out of pocket. So normally when I go out for a shoot, I'll have my regular gear I always reach for. I love the lenses I use, a nice mix of Sony, Tamron, and Sigma, uh, with a different kit for each photo and for video. They are fantastic quality, they allow me to capture everything I need and be prepared for any situation. But those things for me are lacking in what I might describe as artistic flavor. This lens reminds me of my film lenses that I use on my film camera and I love their little imperfections. I love the manual focus. It gives you focus, makes you stronger. I love how tiny they are. And in this lens, I want the imperfections. I want that softness. I want some of that imperfect chromatic aberration stuff in there. I love that it forces me out of old habits and to try to think about my composition a little more, to slow down, and uh, to really kind of get into the images that I'm capturing. With that being said, let's go friggin' tester, bud. Um, I'm sorry. After spending some time with this lens, it definitely has some of that flavor to it. Uh, I can see the imperfections and having it be purely manual focus really puts me in a zone that I often go to with my film camera. 
And I realize and acknowledge that there may be a lot of photographers who are thinking, well, uh, yeah, composition is like one of the most important things in photography, idiot. Well, like sometimes after doing it for a long time, it's nice to have a reminder to bring us back to just having fun with cameras again. Now, this is made for APS-C cameras like the A6600 series, uh, but you can use it with other Sony systems if you want. Um, you'll just sacrifice some megapixels depending on which camera that you're using it on. And also there'll be a crop factor. So you end up with something more like closer to a 50 in that case uh, to avoid the vignette. Uh, some downsides as well, keeping in mind it was $100, um, which I'm pretty sure is like $20 American. Uh, it is definitely super soft, especially at 1.1, which is to be a little expected, but it's like very soft in like almost a smeary kind of way. Like if you put butter on the lens um, or like a haze or mist filter in more relatable photographic terms, a good, cr uh, a good amount of cr cr a good there's a good amount of chromatic aberration as well. As with most lenses, as you stop down the aperture, you do get a pretty significant uh, increase in the quality. And uh, when you're shooting at f2 and above, it um, it does perform a lot better than 1.1. Also, I don't believe that there's any kind of weather sealing in this bad boy. So I probably wouldn't take it diving or anything, but again, it is 100 Canadian dollars. So uh, that's it for this video. You can go ahead and order one and then send me the remaining $1,500 that you would have used to buy another lens because of all the money that I just saved you. Bye.